I'm doing a DIS for Dr. Mortava, like I just said, and the, the purpose of that research is to study the aeroelastic effect known as flutter. Uh, and that can be very dangerous. It occurs a lot in flexible structures when you think about power lines, stop signs, building uh, airplanes. All these, all these uh, uh, structures can experience flutter. So since this class is aircraft stability and control, we want to talk about a lot more flutter in aircraft and how that affects it. So basically, it's a combination of aerodynamic forces. You have your lift and drag, uh, the stiffness of the structure, the spring constant, and the inertial forces. Uh, what basically happens is, as wind, as wind increase in structures, uh, one example, one well-known example is the uh, Tacoma Narrows Bridge. You've probably all seen it. We've talked about it in a couple of our classes. Uh, how the bridge started vibrating violently, and it kind of looks like that, so to speak, from the side, all right? And as the wind speed increased, and you don't have sufficient dampening to damp out those uh, aerodynamic forces, energy, uh, aerodynamic energy in the uh, structure itself, the amplitude starts to increase. As the amplitude increases, it goes to an unstable, uh, it goes to an unstable state. And we we want to we want to you know make sure our structures are stable. So what I put on the board is just basically to uh, describe what what happens with flutter and the experiment itself, right? So as as you start to move time time goes by and your wind is, is constant, uh, you're going to have these constant amplitudes here, and that's a that's a boundary stability basically because it's not staying in the same split. But if you look at it. The boundary is the same, right? So we have a we have a stable system there. For this one here, the amplitude increases, and you basically go to a divergent uh, instability, unstable state. And the last one is wall two. So what I had here, I made a cardboard wing out of baby diapers. Uh, put some magnetic strip on it to use to use to change the, uh, the aerodynamic center of the airfoil itself. So I'm going to slide the magnetic strip back and forth to show you these effects that are on the board. Well, you, you, you move the weight to change the center of mass of the wing. Aerodynamic center does not change. Yes. Correction. The center of mass of the wing. You're doing great so far. Everybody needs correction sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> So the structure itself is basically just a platform to suspend the wing in the air so I can have this constant velocity from the fan flowing over it. Uh, I put <coughs> pins on the side to attach the rubber bands and that's basically it, some braces and a platform there. This structure itself is about two feet away from the wing. I usually do it, but just this is only, it only gives sufficient room for uh, the wing being two feet, but that should be sufficient. I usually test it at two and a half feet. <coughs> so the rubber bands go on the side. They're about equal with equal uh, length apart, uh, and I chose these uh, an eighth of an inch width rubber bands. Uh, initially, when I started design, I used quarter of an inch rubber band. The aspect ratio was very small. I had a three and a half inch by one inch core length uh, uh, wing and it was just, it was too much dampening. I wish I had brought that as well too because then you can see how if you have sufficient dampening you don't have to worry about the flutter effect but if, it, if there is not sufficient dampening then it comes in to play. Now the structure has to be flexible. If the structure is not flexible it just failure occurs. It's a brittle structure. Uh, so let's start off with the wing of the cardboard wing. And you should see this effect here. You should see some oscillation, but it's still stable. Right, it's working. Doesn't look impressive now, but you'll see the difference drastic, drastically uh, as I change the uh, center of mass. So the moment you start going to the rear of the wing, the fan is blowing this way. So imagine the airplane coming this way. The moment you start going to the rear, you start getting to that unstable state. It's going to move it a little bit, and you can see how the oscillations are increasing, right? Set the center of the wing now. Oh my gosh. Wow. <laughs> oh! <laughs> That's a failure curve. <laughs> 
And at the back, you can really see that that going to. Uh, well, I'll, I'll leave it on there without the tape, real quick. And you can see how quick the uh, the weight pops off because of the instability, the violentness of the wing shape. But I'm going to tape it down uh, just so we can see a little bit, a little bit more of what's going on with the wing being in the set. Now, because of the rubber bands, the stiffness of the rubber bands. The wing won't flip all the way around. What I have noticed in this previous experiment, this is this is really my first wing that I was messing with. The stiffness of the rubber band started to decrease. The rubber band started getting more and more elastic. At, started getting uh, the stiffness constant decrease. So the rubber band got more stretchier uh, as it stayed on there for a longer period of time. Now, in, in your average structure, that's not the case, right? It's going to flex and so forth, but it's not going to change the <coughs> process. So at that point, failure occurs. So this is what it looks like uh, with, the, with the weight being all the way in the center. And as I go You can see some back and forth motion too, and I think that's probably because of that, the shape of the front of it being uh, a rectangular shape. Airflow is pushing the wings back and forth. Mm -hmm. Start moving back. You can see the oscillation increases. Now, like I said, because of the rubber band, you won't see this continuing to go on to infinity, but you can get a good idea of how it's working. Oh man! Does that look stable or unstable? <laughs> Would you want to ride on that? <laughs>